Take two. I'd like to thank, welcome back, Bruce here from tbrucewitted.com. Always, always feel free to email me at tbrucewitted at gmail.com. Check the spelling above, tbrucewitted at gmail.com. I answer every single letter, a email, um, and uh, I answer it in detail. And if it means phoning somebody, I'll do it at my expense, okay? I think it's the right thing to do. I would like to thank drumforum.org for mentioning this site. I believe reprinting a whole page of my article, you'll see earlier if you search, uh, although I don't have a search fun function, uh, the article on the rim shot, okay? Uh, I talk about doing the various sorts of rim shots where it, uh, you know, you can hit. Wow, that's a tight mother. Okay. Well, it's still tight. Anyway, you can hit a short rim shot, a skinny one here. You can hit one over here towards the center. In butt end, bead in, and stuff. Uh, the point is, I wanted to make. The, what, one point I didn't really make as properly is that. It's not just for projection, notwithstanding the comments of Carmen Apis the Great and Ginger Baker the Great, who, in the absence of amplification, often had to play with a, you know, with a mic, and they would play rim shots all around, like, and so forth. If you're going to do that, though, make sure you tune the drums higher, or it'll just sound like a tacky, like, sort of. Okay. Here's my point today. My points today are drummers launch into beats. This is why why I started this website. I used to have below my banner. It's not about beats, and yet drummers come into this basement. You give them a tempo or something, and they launch into the. And when it comes to a fill. be tomorrow before the fill finishes, and it's always this Pink Floydy dotted thing. You know, like an outtake from metal or something. Um, listen, the song will dictate the beat to you, and I'm going to give you an example of me playing to a Charlie Sexton song. And I don't sit around and play the records unless it's the night before a session, in which case there's a specific piece of music I'll listen to, like, Eddie Bears or Carlos Vega with, with Vince Gill or something for, for cues and note length and stuff and the tr their train beat as opposed to mine. Um, the other thing is drummers just, you know, they, they launch into beats, they don't listen. Uh, it, it just get, it, I mean, what, it, this is drums. It, it, by doing so, you're just making a, a noble instrument, you know. <laughs> into a garage band, which I guess is okay. Um, new products, surgical tape, okay, removable easily, it's not like duct tape, clear, semi-clear, use it on the cymbals or drums. Uh, my latest, uh, oh, I just got these. Now you know how cymbal rivets, split end rivets cost you an arm and a leg, right? Okay, I mean you buy like six company rivets at a time or eight or so, enough for one big symbol or three symbols, well, however you count it. And they're brass rivets, and uh, they're hard to put on because they, they're flared, and you gotta put them in a vise and bang them or something with a hammer and a... Anyway, these are proper split-end ri rivets, like I grew up with. It took me 50 freaking years to find the proper ones again. They're Spanaur, S-P-A-E-N-A-U-R. You could always email me um, and... and you know, do what I can to secure them for you. The point is, those the drum company rivets are like, like I said, I think eight minimum or something, and they cost you four to five bucks, or ten or twelve, and then you're up to seven or eight bucks. Eighty, I asked for eight, I got, they threw in ten, I got ninety for eleven dollars plus tax, okay? Ninety split end, not office fasteners, can't do it by hand, you gotta have split end, or uh, needle nose pliers. 
figure it out, okay? You want to spend eight bucks on a few rivets that are going to pop off during the night and you've got to have a flashlight to find them in a club or a studio. Okay, the other thing is, I don't have a crusade against anybody. It's all good, but you know Moon Gel? Moon Gel, curious, um, <laughs> coincidentally, the same color. Um, instant TAC, T-A-C, Instant TAC. I know you'll, can you get a close-up, please? Oh, that's a wall I'm speaking. Okay. I, again, email me. But this, we buy this here at a, a store in the North Country called Dollarama. Like dollar. I mean, Dollarama. There are other dollar stores, I'm sure, that have the same product. It's uh, all the attributes of Moon Gel. Uh, you know, reusable. Okay, I'll replace it. Replace this tape. Push pins and tacks. Won't dry out. Can be used again and again and again. Safe, non-toxic, and uh, non-toxic. You can use it at blows, above symbols, below toms, and they will not fall off. But the same piece of stuff with me through 21 days of sessions, and they're still here, and they haven't budged, and they make a really nice sound because you can just use the smallest amount. You need it for like three seconds, okay? Put it at the edge of the, and it just it it. What I think it is, is they used to have this tape, alligator tape, they used in LA, they would take like duck's tape. I remember going to Ocean Way, was guest of Keltner, and they would have duct tape and then they would make it into little alligator humps, right? And then put it on the drum. And it, I guess the theory was to place more mass over less space and you needed, uh, didn't need to use as much muffling material. Well, that's what this does. You use less, it's heavier. It does the trick. Now, Moon Gel is what, eight bucks for eight strips? Instant Tac, one dollar. One dollar. Never paid more. Instant Tac, one dollar. I mean, I'd only need one, but I'm buying them up just in case, because, like, uh, it's like rivets, you know? You say, well, I've got a hundred, they'll last forever. But anyway, the whole point is Instant Tac, one dollar. Okay, I'm going to play the Charlie Sexton tune. I had trouble playing to it originally when we started this, this business, this this um, rant today, but I wasn't listening. I wasn't listening to the fact, you know, all my flurries and excitement with the beautiful melody, uh, you'll hear, uh, that there were slight pauses towards the end of the, between the verse and the chorus and stuff like that, okay? So, you know, sometimes a quarter note, a quarter note, get you the gig if you're auditioning, just listening. Whereas this guy jumping in a... Think about it, okay? Now let's see how I fare. Uh, um, I tried to cue it up, but I may have to jump it back.
their feet, where the natural pulse resides. That's where you got to be playing. Thank you for your time.